If I could describe to get my life tour in one word, it would be vulnerability. Showing up for yourself is so important. Welcome to the Get My Life Tour. I'm your host, Lydia T. Blanca. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the Get My Life Tour. It is me, your host, Lydia T. Blanco. And as always, I am excited because you decided to show up for yourself and take center stage, and that is no small task. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the Get My Life Tour. Oh my goodness, you are here. That is amazing. And if this is your 50th time or your second time tuning in, Welcome back. I'm so glad that you are on tour and that you are committed to showing up for yourself and those who you are in community with. Y'all, I am over the moon right now because this is actually a first. Oh my goodness. You know, I'm really not impressed by firsts, but this is a good first. Today, we have our first couple married couple taking center stage here on the Get My Life Tour. Y'all, they're Black, they're beautiful, they're educated, they're in love, they're in business together. And I'm not making any of this up. Yes, this is what's happening right now. I'm losing my mind, but I'm gonna come back. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me take a breath. Okay. Joining me today, joining us today on the Get My Life Tour is Dr. Kenneth and Mrs. Dominique Lanier. They are the creators, the founders, the inventors. Oh my gosh, they are out here formulating ingredients and medicines to help us feel better as women. Oh my goodness. Okay, you're probably wondering what I'm talking about. They are the founders of Verifem, okay? Using years of experience creating a successful pharmaceutical company, Dr. Lanier and his wife, Dominique, created Verifem to help women who suffer every month from debilitating PMS symptoms. I don't know why I tripped over that word, but you know what? I'm gonna just keep it in here because I'm not perfect. <laughs> but maybe hmm, two months or so ago, this page started to follow me on Instagram. I'm like, what is this? Then I found out they were black owned. Then I found out it was this couple that is taking center stage. But look, I'm so glad that they're here. And before I go on and on, help me welcome Dr. and Mrs. Lanier to the Get My Life Tour. Hi, we're so happy to be here. <laughs> Very excited. Thanks, Lydia. Yes. Okay. This enthusiasm that I have about you both is so real. In my day to day, I get to speak to so many entrepreneurs and business owners and leaders, and that's cool. But to be able to have them sit down together, um, if they're in relationship with their partner, is not, you know, a daily occurrence. So thank you for taking time out of both of your schedules to do this together and come center stage. Thanks for having us. It's really a pleasure. Yeah, we're really excited. It's special to us, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Okay. So, you know, I can go on and on about what I've read on the internet or, you know, have skimmed through on social media, but let us know who Dominique and Kenneth are. Yeah, absolutely. So me, I'm actually a pharmacist. You know, that keeps me busy, but it's my greatest pleasure. And story is a little different than Dominique's side of the story. It's the same story, different perspective. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. So, you know, we have this inside joke um, where uh, Dominique will ask me to get something for her. She'll say, oh, I wish you can get me. You know, that's kind (laughs) of what the joke kind of comes from. And sometimes I'll go get it, sometimes with a (laughs) smile on my face. And sometimes I'll say, oh, man, I have to run another errand. I have to get (laughs) something else for her. But um, one particular day, she did have a request um, that I thought I couldn't fulfill. And I'll I'll tell that part of the story. Please. Um, I... One of my career's uh, passions is event planning. So I had this huge event um, to produce, um, Crunch Time. And 
I was looking at this long, you know, list of things I had to do. And it wasn't just, you know, the list, the task, it was getting myself um, into a place where I was ready to lead. And as we all know, as leaders, entrepreneurs, um, especially when you're providing a service where you have to be authentic, where you have to be sincere, uh, that takes a lot of energy and work. Um, so it wasn't the task at hand. It wasn't getting myself there. It was the fact that what my period was coming up due in a couple days, it could start right now while I'm trying to get this stuff together. It could start while I'm trying to produ- produce an event. And even if it didn't start within those, you know, within that multi-day event, I was still experiencing severe PMS symptoms. Um, so, <laughs> so where he comes in is, you know, I finally lay, finally lay down. I'm tossing and turning after, you know, got myself to a stopping per- point. And um, one of my severe period um, so. symptoms is insomnia. And he says, you know, he's, you could tell he's walking on eggshells. Yep. <laughs> and he says, well, what can I do for you? And for him, you know, you... <laughs> you don't want to be reactive. (laughs) And I was able to take a step back. And it's like, what do I really need from him? It wasn't that I needed him to take on one of the tasks. um, Or to he couldn't put me in the place that I needed to be mentally or emotionally. Um, So my only answer was, you can take my period for me. (laughs) That's what you could do for me. And you know, I'm sure I rolled over angrily. (laughs) She sure did. And I thought that was our joke. You know, I said, well, you know, I can't really do that for you. So I rolled over the other way. And um, (laughs) me being the tinkerer that I am, I started to think. I said, you know what? I have this knowledge. I really love playing with different medications to see how I can help people with them. So maybe I can actually do something about that. Mm-hmm. And as uh, soon as she went to sleep, because if I move, she'll move and she'll say, hey, where are you going? So <laughs> I had to wait until she was asleep. I was still walking on eggshells. But um, as soon as she did go to sleep, I actually got up, went into our medicine cabinet and took a look at what we had available. And I combined a few over the counter um, medications that we had and created a cocktail for her. And when I woke up the next morning, he gave me a cocktail and I looked at him and said, you're not trying to kill me, right? <laughs> I always say that, you know, <laughs> he, he is a doctor, but to me, he's just, you know, a husband. Yep. <laughs> not that he would kill I me, love it. but I love you know, it. it's just another inside joke of ours. Um, so uh, I took that cocktail and I had an amazing cocktail of medic of uh, really supplements and medications. Yep. Um, and I had an amazing day. Um, and that is kind of where Verifim started. Yep. You know, I love how this inside joke has turned into a solution for women. What? Okay. <laughs> Let's skip over the fact that you are such a boss lady and you're a pharmacist. What are we talking <laughs> like? Come on. This is what I'm talking about. This is why I get excited. You know, I love tinkering things. This was just our joke. This is now a successful business. And like I said, a real solution for women. I want to know more about what you've been able to partner on. Yes, they're yeah. a fin, but where have you found it or where did the level of support, yes, marriage, right? But where did the level of support for one another to be so intentional about creating solutions come from? Absolutely. I think that's in our day to day, you know, marriage is definitely a journey and um, it's one of the best things that has happened to me. I don't know if I'm speaking for uh, Dominique as well, but he is, he is. <laughs> <laughs> but as a part of that journey, it's active. You know, a lot of people think about marriage as just, hey, I get there, I get married and then everything's going to be great. But from a husband's perspective, you have to listen to your wife. You know, sometimes you, you just have to bite your tongue and listen to what she actually needs. And Dominique has been so supportive of me. It helps me listen to her, listen to anything that she may request and pay attention to what she's actually saying and not saying. And I think for us, that really evolved into a business 
where we've not only been able to create solutions in the forms of uh, capsules and packets for women that they can take, but we've created a process that mimics that Mm -hmm. feedback to where we listen and we create solutions that are tailored to each individual woman. Absolutely. And I I think I'm going to start with the word individual, um, something that we had to um, relearn um, was individualism in marriage, especially as to uh, people with who are goal oriented, <laughs> you know, with our own ideas about how to reach a des- destination and we share the destination. Yep. We both agree on that part, um, but we also feel like our individualism and, and our goals as individuals still meet there and we can support each other in getting there. And it's not something that we have to grow apart in or um, argue over. And eventually, as you see with Verifim, it did grow. We did grow together. Absolutely. Um, Me, you know, really in branding and, um, you know, the whole, you know, feedback of what the, women well, actually want. wellness is important to me. So the whole being, not just let's, do period because I'm like, okay, if I'm going to be taking something, you know, um, I may want to, you know, have a child. Well, we may want to have a child one day. And I say, I, because I am a person (laughs) and I'm taking this, I may want to have a child one day. So how can I make, how can I do my part in being the healthiest being starting today? Um, you know, we talk about bone health with women and things like that. Um, you know, sleeping well. So anyways, So this is how the whole entire pack comes up instead of it just being one individual supplement. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I told you both before we started recording, I'm like, look, I will agree. But (laughs) I'm so glad I had myself on mute while you were speaking because I am not a married individual. Like I am, I'm not married. So to listen to you speak about individualism and togetherness. Number one, that's a word. (laughs) Number two, uh, the way that you all listen to one another, from what I can just see right now, it just, um, in my eyes, make you more of a powerful force together. You know, if that makes any sense at all. And the way that your position, Dominique, on the website and then the conversation I had with your husband, right? I love that you're mindful of positioning, right, in your relationship, but even in the marketing of your business. I think that's so strategic, it's so intentional, and it's so powerful. Talk to me more about how you all have found balance in doing business and being partners in life. Absolutely. And I have to credit Dominique with that, with her skill and just her talent in being an event planner. So she's really big on drawing lines. So it's not like we lay in bed and talk about business. It's a hard line. We schedule our conversations about business um, so it doesn't bleed over and become us, you know, and um, really in our roles, we actually have separation mm-hmm. that works together for the same purpose as well. So with me working on the day to day, more of the business side and working with her, like she said, on the branding, making sure everything is in touch with wi- what women need and um, also giving me honest feedback about the formulation. So we have our distinct roles within our business. So that kind of helps create that separation. And the fact that we are both involved in many things, we can't let this become our only thing, you know? So from my perspective, that's kind of how we've been able to achieve that. Well, I, for me, I would say that our experience as a married couple for as long as we've been married, um, you know, and, and I guess I should just be concise in saying the adversities that we've experienced um, allowed us to be in a place to where we can run a business together because right. it's not easy. Um, any partnership is not easy, especially business partnership. Uh, marriage is not easy. <laughs> right, right. So I feel like the adversities that we've been through, um, that we've worked through, that we have mastered, you know, uh, lessons that we have mastered uh, allowed us to be where we are today. Yep, Mm -hmm. absolutely. That's incredible. Oh, I want to go back to something you said, Dominique, about 
wellness being very important to you. You know, and I'm also thinking about this ongoing conversation about Black people and medicine and well-being and just the time that we're living in. And I think hmm, this, this new normal, right, that women are being more intentional about their wellness as they make decisions about, you know, creating their legacy, right can you can you touch on that because I don't have all the words right (laughs) you're married to the pharmacist or you know you're giving him feedback and he's concocting and all these other things talk to me about the level of intentionality and the importance of you making sure that what you formulate together um is safe for women in their overall well-being exactly um so Something that I've had, well, just really is in my blood (laughs) is um, to know there's just the knowledge. So we're not just taking things because it says it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I know that's not so easy when you don't get to see where things are being made, where ingredients are coming from. So I, you know, um, you know, unfortunately it is just my word, but I actually do ask where is this coming from? I don't like the way it smells. I don't like the way it tastes. Um, is it something, you know, just like I look at my chicken, you, you know, what's in my chicken, <laughs> you know, are there hormones? Are there this, I'm doing the same thing with what I'm putting in my body, um, with, you know, the ingredients and things like that. Um, when we talk about wellness, I don't think that it's just something that we check off a list in a day, right? right? We don't just take our pack with our food. So, you know, with our food and we drink, uh, you know, a glass of water, it's how is this going to affect and make my day the best that it can actually, that it can be, which means that if my day to day and, you know, starting with this moment, if my day to day is the best that it can be, that means that I can potentially have the best week. And when I, when I'm saying the best, I'm talking about, uh, at least for me, the, um, looking for the word, um, just be the best you that you can be. No, no. How much I can get done. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, how much I can get done. That's, that's important to me because I have a lot to do. <laughs> I have a lot that I want to achieve and every single moment of every day is, is, is important to reaching those goals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, for me, uh, one of the blessings is being a pharmacist, but being married to someone who's not a clinician. Mm-hmm. So it creates a yin and yang type of effect. So I'm reading, I'm researching, I'm sourcing products that I can trust. You know, I can look and see that they're CGMP certified, which is the highest certification for a supplement. And I know that that is supposed to be safe and effective. And then what I do is actually try them out, make sure everything mixes well and is is a good blend. And then I get the real world feedback from my wife, who is not a clinician, who is not blinded by just, you know, the alphabet soup that's attached to an actual ingredient and can say the things like she mentioned. I don't like how this smells. Well, it could be great for me, but I don't like how it smells. This tablet's too big. You know, well, this one kind of made me feel, you know, not 100 percent. So then I can take that and mix the science with the real feedback. And that helps us ensure safety and efficacy in in patients. That's good. Oh, my. Oh, Mm -hmm. my. Like, what is the world supposed to do with you both? (laughs) (laughs) Dr. Lanier, I want you to delve into the science of what you've been able to formulate. You know, I'm going to say it again. Y'all, he's a Black pharmacist, okay, just in case you hear me the 100, you know, times that I've said it. But talk to us about what goes into these supplements um, and why it's safe, you know, and why it is a smart um, option for women. Absolutely. So the menstrual cycle is very complicated. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a man that doesn't understand (laughs) It's very complicated. So you have a lot of factors in play. Uh, What we do know about the menstrual cycle is that hormone fluctuation, so the change in hormone levels are responsible for some of the side effects that you feel. 
So for example, during the uh, phase in your menstrual cycle known as ovulation, you have um, a peak in your estrogen and your progesterone levels. That's why women feel good. They feel like they can conquer the world. Um, but when those levels start to go down, then you have the mood swings, you have cravings, you have insomnia. So one of the natural substances that can combat that is 5-HTP, which is essentially serotonin. So when you add serotonin in the form of a supplement, you're adding a natural source of uh, really a neurotransmitter that can help level out those levels so women don't feel the same side effects. In addition to that, you have bloating, you have breast tenderness, you have cramping. Uh, four out of five women experience some form of PMS during their lifetime. And after studying the actual cause of these symptoms, I've learned what can actually combat those causes. So with uh, cramping, fish oil is a great supplement that helps calm down the actual muscle spasms. So is magnesium. These are natural substances that help reduce cramping. And from there, how our website is actually set up is set up so women can actually control their, their kit. So literally they go on the site, they click on whatever, you know, package they want, which right now is one package, but then they click boost. Right. So each boost correlates to side effects that they may have. So a woman may click um, breast tenderness. So then that is actually an added ingredient of vitamin E that we add into the package. When you take vitamin E consistently, it does help reduce breast tenderness and it goes on from there. So I could go on and on about the science. Right. Don't um, go give out but, your secrets now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, the competition is always somewhere. Yep. Like, hmm, we're, not, we're not doing that here. Okay. Now right, right. like, get your life and get your own. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, that is really good information, right? Anyone tuned in now has that. And of course, there are them as a resource. You know, Dominique, you're a woman, right? You got this special cocktail when you woke up mm -hmm. and I want to know, like, what has it been like learning more about mm -hmm. how your body can respond to these different supplements and just about your body? There's so much we don't know as women, right? We don't have many conversations. Somebody's like, oh, go read an article or here's a book. But it's really been taboo to learn about and embrace our body. So what has your experience been like? Um, I would say my, the, my number one experience is learning how to advocate, even with him being my husband and us knowing our, you know, each other's deepest, darkest secrets. It was still challenging to advocate. Um, we're so programmed not to advocate. I'm um, taking something because he, you know, knows the signs of it. And even though I feel like it's not, you know, even though I could feel like it could be better, um, I wasn't saying anything and that was being, that was doing a disservice to me. Um, so basically what I learned the most was saying, I, I, this doesn't work. I know you're saying that it should work this way. It doesn't work for me this way. And which is why we got into that. No one is the same, even as individuals, I'll go through seasons of my life where I need, I'm going to need to change my pack. Um, which is why, you know, I really pushed with him. Um, hey, we need to make sure that others can do the same. Um, so I would have to say I learned just advocating for myself, um, even though I thought I, you know, was, you know, the outspoken, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I need. I was like, no, I, I guess I am a little programmed that way. Mm. Yeah. That is profound. It's it's almost like, well, it's not even it's almost like we can't advocate for ourselves if we don't have the proper proper information, right? Mm -hmm. And beyond information experience. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm so glad that you shared that, Dominic. <laughs> I, you know, I want to be mindful not to call you Mrs. Lanier, Mrs. Lanier, even though that's <laughs> who you are, right? But journalistic, I'm like, Lydia. Let her be her own woman. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, so I'm like, Dominique. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we had a conversation 
that I really enjoyed and I value, and I want to keep that conversation going about the importance of men being more than allies, being informed, being willing to advocate and partner with women, whether it's their wives, their little sister, or cousin, um, however they are in an inappropriate relationship with women. Dr. Lanier, let's, let's talk about it, right? Uh, it's always important to be learning and yes. to be compassionate, right? But, you know, what has your experience been on um, your end of the spectrum and what advice would you give to men um, yeah. as they seek to partner with women and understanding their bodies and supporting them on their journeys? Absolutely. So the first thing I would say is it's their body. And that's something that you said in your question, it's their body. So even if you think you know, you don't know. And sometimes women do not even know the extent of what's going on. Right. So there does uh, there is a requirement for you to actually um, be a student of the lady in your life, whether it's your sister or your wife, you know, and really pay attention to what they're asking you. Pay attention to what is happening around them, because outside of their bodies, they're whole people. Right. So outside influences. You know, many women, you know, are, are are working even at home. You know, they go through a lot. And even as men, when we have these outside influences, they can dictate how we feel about certain things. So as men, it's re- very important to be sensitive to those uh, factors. It's very important to ask questions and not just make assumptions. And also shut up. You know, it's it can be frustrating to sit there and constantly tell them, you know, what you think is happening or ask them questions. Sometimes, you know, for Dominique, she doesn't want to talk about how she feels all the time. She doesn't want to talk about, oh, my cramps are so bad or, oh, I can't focus or I can't sleep. And I'm sitting here like a clinician with a pen and paper out (laughs) writing things down. And she's like, you know what? Just leave me alone, you know? (laughs) And I can't take that personal. You know, I am a fix it type of person. I never want her to go through anything that's anything less than perfect or anything that does not make her feel good. But at the same time, just learning to, you know, kind of temper that and and be that support system for her, uh, be sensitive and really, uh, really attend to her needs as much as possible. I would say those are my pearls that I would give any man uh, who has a woman in their life that they really care about. And I know it's his question, but I wanted to add something to that. Um, And it seemed really small. Um, when we're talking about support, we're also talking about the support in making it easy because to go to the doctors, to in making it easy to even let her get out for a walk so that she can, you know, take that evaluation of herself. Um, we do not realize that it's it sometimes it is challenging to just go to the doctors and in supporting me in like, okay, so, Hey, here's some people that I like, here's some people that you might like. Um, what, what day do you need me to have, have, have the baby? You know what I mean? Um, so those are, that's a big way that he supported me in, in, well, always that has supported me in my health. Um, not just with, this particular topic, but others as well. Yeah. I love it. Oh my, you know, (sighs) you guys, you two, right? (laughs) You're both not me, right? Excuse me, Dominic. (laughs) You two are really, I don't even have the words for it. (laughs) Like to know that you exist and this is how you operate and you are who you appear to be is phenomenal. There are so many people who are featured often, a whole bunch of people I've spoken to clearly journalistically, right? But the harmony that I'm experiencing right now in conversation with you all is beautiful. It really is. You know, and, you know, I don't know what every moment is like, 
But it's not often that we get this kind of insight, right? Yes, we're speaking about business and relationship and partnership and menstruation, right? But the fact that we can have this dynamic conversation speaks to something in the both of you, right? Now, look, I'm going to continue to give you your flowers, but let's talk about (laughs) menstruation, right? Um, So many people have not wanted to have this conversation. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you are correct. It's something that sadly is taboo. And, yeah. you know, it's sad, you know, a lot of uh, men will use the whole menstruation excuse and you can't see my air quotes, but I'm throwing up air quotes <laughs> excuse as a way to try to um, suggest that they are better than women when that's not the case. When you really look at what a woman has to endure and the changes that occur in her body at that time, but they are able to maintain and still be successful, you would basically be able to argue almost the contrary in some cases, you know? Trying and, to get browning points. Yeah, I am trying to get browning points. You know, that's, that's part of it. You know, you got to store those browning points. <laughs> but, um, you know, my whole point is that that creates a, a situation in a society to where a lot of women are afraid to speak up, are afraid to advocate for themselves, are afraid to even talk about their menstruation because it's been seen as a weakness, which is not true. It's not a weakness. It's a natural process that really prepares for, you know, new growth and and optimization of health. And I would say, you know, even bringing this to some of my closest girlfriends, you know, another sacred uh, relationship, if you will. When you, you know, we've talked about menstruation, no problem. We've all, you know, been there for, you know, for births and things like that. But the question of, you know, hey, girl, man, I just feel, and it's like, so what are you going to do about it now? That is one of the most uncomfortable conversations we have ever had. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, and it's like, what do you mean? Because we're all so used, we're also so often told it's normal. Like, just keep going. And we do keep going, but do we, we shouldn't settle with keep going in the way that we've always have. Um, so that, that was an uncomfortable co- conversation with even my closest girlfriends. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Dominic, you mentioned earlier in conversation about settling for what's natural, right? That when you said that, I was like, okay, well, she's going to keep picking up the mic and slapping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I really am glad that you're having those conversations and that I believe this conversation is going to prompt others to be more candid in their relationship is mind blowing to me how often we think we're so um, deeply rooted in our connections to other people, but we're not having honest conversations. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Absolutely. So Verifem is opening up the door to those conversations. And I want to talk a minute about your blog. And I think that's just like the natural storyteller. I mean, I'm like, where's the story? Where's the story? Like this <laughs> is the story, right? Nice. But you've done such a good job at, really covering uh, those health and wellness stories, right? Talking about um, PCOS, did I say that correctly? Yes. Um, And irregular cycles um, and just different issues. I think now more than ever, Black women are starting to have that dialogue um, with their, you know, physicians. But we know the um, disproportionate um, health you know, matters that happen within the system and so many other things. Why um, was it important for you both to create that section to inform women? Absolutely. And I guess I'll I'll start there. Really, um, a lot of times it's hard to find information that you can trust. So what our goal is, is to establish that trust with women that they can come to us, whether it's our website or reach out to us, give us a call, and we'll first educate them, you know, so that's our primary goal is to provide that education. Now, since this is a sensitive subject, and also just looking at the fact that everybody has busy schedules, having a blog is important, so we can put that information and that education 
at our patient's fingertips so they can kind of say, hey, you know what? I do have this issue, whether it's PCOS, whether it's fibroids, whether they are wondering what causes cramps, you know, they can look at that blog, read and get educated about it. That's really good. And, you know, sometimes, oh, I'll even speak for myself. There have been times where I've gone for uh, women's wellness appointments or whatever. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what should I be asking? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> what, what MD, right? Or just right. Like, or right. start Googling things. Uh, let me shout out a black organization instead of doing like, you know, the bigger, um, <laughs> more well-known, the Black Women's Health Imperative. Mm -hmm. They have such great information there um, that, you know, you can't find anywhere else that comes from Black people in the medical field, um, and they tailor resources for us so that we can be equipped. And, you know, the reason why, another reason why I called out the blog is because I believe that is what you all are able to do as well. Sometimes you don't know where to start in conversation with those who you're in community with, um, and you just don't know where to start so that you know, the fact that you've created the resource is extremely helpful. And that's a little plug there, right? Because um, <laughs> a lot of us are, you know, saying what we know, but it's not factual. So go right. visit the blog, right? And yes, please. <laughs> right from, you know, a real doctor. Oh, my gosh. I really appreciate where this conversation has been able to go. And, you know, you both have shown up incredibly. <laughs> you have, you have, you know, I'm, I'm sure many people are curious and I am too. What has been a get my life moment for you both? Yes. And, um, that's actually a great question. And we appreciate, uh, the opportunity to share our get our life <laughs> moment. And we would have to say, um, just leading up to last year, well, really 2019, mm -hmm. we've been so focused on being right. So for me being the best husband I can be for Dominique being best the best wife, wife father, <laughs> entrepreneurs, right. pharmacists, wedding planners. But in 2019, we actually hit a fork in the road. And that fork had two paths. One path would be more the same, just focusing on the outcome. Mm -hmm. And the other path required a lot of work, right? And that was how do we reboot and how do we focus on becoming and actually embracing the process to becoming the things that we are focused on the destination too. So I would say the end of uh, 2019, November, around that mm -hmm. time was that get our life moment. And growing from that 2020 through now, um, we've grown closer together mm -hmm. from a relational standpoint. Our business has um, thrived. Naturally. It was, it's natural. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We've built many businesses um, without intention uh, because we have the passion, you know, the education, um, the support from many places, but it it wasn't natural. Um, and this is, I would say, the most natural business I've ever yes. been a part of um, growing. Um, so, yeah, just getting more of the love for, for the journey in, in, in the front instead of where, where, you know, where we want to be. Yep. Yeah. Dominique, you keep doing this thing. <laughs> We're not there yet. We're not there. Back over here, get your wife. Get your I wife. know, right? right? <laughs> She's amazing. She is amazing. Thank you, guys. More love for the journey than mm -hmm. the destination. Yeah. Yep. Right. That will correct something deep in your spirit. I mean, I literally just had to correct my posture. I'm going to take that with me. More love for the journey than the destination. Yeah. That applies to so many things, you know? Um, oh, my goodness. Like, as an unmarried bride, right? I'm just claiming it. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I can take that with me as I show up 
for myself, you know, pursuing media entrepreneurship and in relationship with my friends and family. And just as I go after what it is that I'm pursuing, and I really hope that those who are tuned in will take that with them as well. That require that mindset requires a level of maturity. You have to be open. Yeah. To yes. What yeah. made you open to falling in love with the journey opposed to the destination? I think uh, one for me is reaching destinations and um, being unhappy mm-hmm. uh, or them not looking like you work so hard for them to look. Um, maybe you have it in your hand, but it, it but it's frail, you know, um, I would I would say that that's that would be mine. Yeah, absolutely. And on my end, really adversity, right? Mm -hmm. So the other end of the spectrum. So really going through those valleys and needing something to look up to so you can actually aspire to new heights. And, you know, sometimes that can be daunting when you do run into adversity and that goal seems so far off, right? So if you're just focused on that, you're not embracing the process to improving toward that goal. And then you get to that point, like Dominique said, when you actually get there and you feel empty, you Mm -hmm. know, and that's because you didn't embrace the process. Mm -hmm. I just had to take a deep breath. I'm literally going (laughs) to lose my head off my shoulders because that's such good information. Right. But it takes time to get there. It doesn't sound like an overnight process. No, no. not at all. Oh my God. <laughs> we're still we're still working on it. Yes, yeah. We are. We yeah. are. <laughs> right. But it goes back to what you know you you both were outlining for us at the beginning of the stop on a tour. And it was that individualism and that togetherness. <laughs> like I was reading Bell Hugs all about love. And one of the ways that love is defined in her book by um, a man by the name of Dr. Peck is one's ability to nurture one's own or another's spiritual growth, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to be willing, interested, um, and open to doing that. And that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing all of the love. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. To be in love. (laughs) And to be in business and in community and in so many other things is so exciting. But what I know to be true is that it's a lot of work. Yes. And that's what I hear you saying. Yes. It's a lot of work. Yes. It's a lot of separating and something that we, I would say around that 2019 time, we also, I know it's not on the same topic necessarily, but since you mentioned loved, is we took, well, we invited love in as a third entity, not just I love him and he loves me. It's what choices would I make? Because, you know, if I love him and I'm trying to make a big decision in my life, I'm taking him into consideration. But if we look at love as a third entity, what is best for me and what is best for him? And me doing what's best for me actually in turn is better than doing what I think he might want me to do or what he thinks he might want me to do in this moment. Because in this moment, we're, we're, we're trying to get bigger and, and better. So why would we make decisions off of who we are in this moment? Um, so if you take the love, it, it I guess the love is the same as like the destination that we want to be. In, and we make decisions from there. You know, sometimes it is hard. Like, why, why are you saying no to me right now? And it's easy for him to communicate. Well, because if you said you wanted this at this time, that means we have to make this decision here now. And it's interesting because I actually feel more loved than the times that he said, oh, yeah, whatever you want. Whatever you want to do, that's fine. Because then we reached that destination. It's like, wow, you really, really, really thought about me. Yeah. <laughs> Not just trying to make me happy, but it's this long term. No, I really I really got you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> she dropped the mic again. I mean, 
Back when I needed a new mic. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I broke it. I will Thanks, you um, within the next 24 hours. <laughs> Come on, love ethic. Come on. Okay, let me find out that relationship uh, coaching is in you, in y'all's future. Like, <laughs> ah, Dominique. I'm going to invoice you too, okay? Um, <laughs> that is so good. That is so good. You know, so many people romanticize what experiences um, of those who are in relationship and business can be like. Mm-hmm. And from what you shared about your get my life moment and what you just shared, which I sum up as, as love ethic, right? It's so powerful. Oh my goodness. Dr. Lanier. Yes. You're a part of this. Like, (laughs) (laughs) and I'm watching you right now and the way that you're looking at her when she speaks, the way that you all like have these head cues for one another, <laughs> right? We didn't rehearse any of this. We had our call and I was like, okay, look, these are the logistics, it's a rundown, we're gonna be good. But there's this thing that yes. you do. And I wanna say it's because you're in tune with one yes. another. What would you share with men about being in tune yes you know that's i love that question again i would say that's one of the most important things about your marriage about being married really is knowing your wife being in tune to her not always getting it right because we'll never always get it right you know but when we don't know that's when you listen and then you'll start to learn You know, so when my wife is speaking, I actually listen to her on a level to where I can feel what she's saying, you know, and we're bonded by several experiences, you know, some great, some not so great to where I actually feel the examples that she's talking about, even if she's not actually naming those examples, you know, and again, it's just about being in tune and being there, you know, supporting Sometimes the support is a look, you know, sometimes it's a touch, you know, sometimes that support is a head nod, you know, but if you're not paying attention and as a man, if you're only focused on the things that you want to do, and if you're thinking about only the stuff that you want to think about, you'll miss it because sometimes they're subtle, you know, and for me, I try to be a student of my wife, Mm -hmm. you know, I try to be a student so I can be the best husband that I could be for her. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I don't want you to miss in saying, and I think that I don't want other people to miss in hearing, is that he has stepped away, not stepped away from our marriage, not stepped away from me, but stepped away to, to be in tune with himself. And I felt like that's when he started being in tune with me the most. And of course, I've had my own moments where it wasn't about, you know, what can I do? do for him or how I can be better for him, but how can I be better for myself so that I can be in tune with him? And I, um, like, you know, we keep coming back around to is like, so that we can do this together. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're giving me hope over here. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not the only one either. You know, I am such a hopeful romantic but I'm also very serious about doing my work Mm -hmm. and then having these kinds of conversations right I don't know everything (laughs) we don't know everything and you know I often share that the get my life tour is about getting the answers to the questions that life poses to us right and those are the questions Mm -hmm. we really don't have the the answers to but we get them by being willing to learn from other people and be willing to be in healthy community with other people. Mm -hmm. That is so important, right? The fact that you two have made yourself available to yourselves, to one another, I can only imagine the amazing people you're in community with, right? As a married couple, but 
I say all that to say the way that you have come forth and used up all of the space on the stage, okay? <laughs> I'm going to send that invoice too about this microphone. <laughs> um, but it is beautiful. You both are brilliant and you're on time. Oh my God, <laughs> you're on time. You know, I can only imagine what the ebbs and flows have been like in business and in every other area of your life. That's your business. I'm going to stay out of it, right? <laughs> but there, the way that you exist, ah, uh, we need you. I'm, you're so on time. You're so on time. That's all I'm going to say before I start preaching, okay? And I'm not on that. Uh, <laughs> but I clearly do what I want here. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, it's just my tour. But uh, my goodness, look, I could speak to you both forever. And we already have some things in the works. So I'm so excited about that because yes. people, you both are both worth knowing, loving, and keeping. And that, uh, Lydia, just hurry up and get into it, okay? <laughs> back. Okay, so I'm back. Hey, y'all. <laughs> It's time for y'all to drop the mic, okay? Um, <laughs> the new one that you've paid for already. <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, my wife will probably mess up again. But <laughs> I think um, so for us being entrepreneurs in the healthcare space, we've come to know that most things that grow too fast are infected. Mm -hmm. So our advice is to take your time and be patient and really embrace the journey of success because success is a journey, it's not a destination. And there you have it. I can only imagine how excited people are after listening to you both speak. <laughs> I can only imagine. I mean, I've had so many moments with my mic muted. I'm on this side of the chair. I'm on the other side of the chair. I'm trying not to run around the house and praise. You know, but I can I literally only can imagine and I always ask people for their feedback. So I can't wait uh for the response to you. Um but until we receive that feedback, let people know how they can stay connected with Verifem and with you all on your journeys um, so that they can support and show up for themselves and really um, get in tune with their wellness. Absolutely. So the easiest way is to visit our website, which is verifem.com. On the website, you'll see our blog at the bottom of the page. We do have an active contact us page. And feel free to let us know what's going on with you, uh, with your menstrual cycle. What challenges are you facing? We really pride ourselves on, again, the process. Um, there are other sites that you can go to that you can get just a vitamin or a supplement. But we do or, respond back. <laughs> yeah, we do respond back. Um, you can get vitamin supplements at other um, websites. However, again, we offer a customized experience for women who are really looking for natural solutions to their menstrual health needs. Wonderful. And as always, to stay connected with the Get My Life Tour, visit thegetmylifetour.com or on all social platforms at the Get My Life Tour with the exception of Twitter because it's a little bit too long. So it is at Get My Life Tour. And if you'd like to stay connected with me as I do my work generalistically or just, you know, rant off, be sure to follow me at Lydia T. Blanco on all social platforms or visit my site, LydiaTBlanco.com. Oh, my this has been, I'm just going to go ahead and say it because I can be biased because it's just my platform. I mean, that's not bad, but it is just what it is. You know, this was one of the best stops on the tour. Wow. <laughs> we that. are very okay. flattered, very yes. flattered. <laughs> and, you know, I, I really can't be shy about it because you both are, I feel like, a gift to us. Right. Um, there are not many people who are doing what you're doing. I know I'm sh well, I don't know. I'm sure that you all are familiar with the numbers um, in your industry. Right. So I don't know of many who are killing it, who are 
creating <laughs> and who care. <laughs> right. And the fact that you do is telling of who you are. You have really showed up and shown out. And I'm so grateful. So thank we, you. Yes. We are grateful. We're honored to be on this podcast. Um, we have checked out a few episodes and it's yeah. our honor to be invited to uh, speak to you. So we want to thank you for the opportunity to join the tour and thank you, thank you, um, thank share you. a story. Yes, you are officially on tour, you know, <laughs> and there's no turning back just in case you were wondering. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> this has been incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate each and every time you show up and you listen with your heart. And that is not something that I take lightly. So thank you. And I hope that you got exactly what you needed. If not, share it with someone else. This is what it is all about. Getting the answers to the questions that we, you know, can't really anticipate. I cannot wait to see you right back here since your stage. Until the next time, it has been real. Peace. Mm -hmm.